Hi everyone, welcome to the first episode of Season 3 of the Curious Cube Podcast. As you can see, we have a whole set of new hosts for you guys this season. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Isaac. I am a junior from Central New Jersey, and I started getting invested in uh, competition math in late 7th grade. Um, and outside of math, I really enjoy watching and playing basketball and cubing, which is like uh, speed solving Rubik's Cubes. Hi everyone, I'm Laura, a high school senior from Northern Virginia. I got involved in math in around third grade and I've been doing math ever since, since I really liked it. And outside of math, I also like journalism, content creation and graphic design. Hi everyone, I'm Srinivas. I'm a high school senior from Denver, Colorado. Uh, I started math in sixth grade when I joined the Math Counts team at my middle school. And outside of math, I like teaching, uh, playing strategy games and watching Christopher Nolan movies. I'm Benjamin. I'm a high school senior, homeschooled high school senior, actually, from Phoenix, Arizona. I've been doing math competitions since seventh grade when I joined a math counts team. And some of my hobbies include programming. I like chess. And I also like strategy board games in general, like Srinivas over here. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm a junior from upstate New York. And I started math in fourth grade when I took my first AMC8. Some of my other hobbies include drawing, um, pole vaulting, and debating. So, Laura, how did you get interested in math? Yeah, so I first got interested in math in around third grade. So my brother, he's five years older than me. So at the time, he was in like eighth grade. And then so he was taking the AMC8. And then my parents jokingly asked me if I also wanted to take the AMC8 with him. And I guess for some reason, I decided to say yes. And then so I took my first AMC8 in third grade, and then I really liked the problems. So I kept doing um, AMCs throughout like middle school and eventually high school. And then I think I really got interested in math in during eighth grade because I was doing math counts. And then we had like a pretty intense rivalry with the nearby school since math counts, you compete with like local schools. And so we, my team like worked really hard. We like did a lot of problems together. We became like really close friends. I still talk to them like to this day. So it was a really great experience. And that just sort of like inspired a love for math and me. Yeah, I had like a slightly different, I guess like introduction to math and like contest math in particular. So I got hooked like the summer before my eighth grade year. Um, and this was like in 2020. So. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was like a little thing called COVID-19 going on around that time. So like everyone else, I was in like uh, virtual school and we had like no Zoom like at that time. So basically what that means is I had like a lot of free time at home to myself. And at this like point in time, I was taking a geometry course in school. And one day I was like stuck and I just went to Google for like to uh, search for like a tutorial for like some random concept. I don't even remember what it was. What I stumbled upon was the Art of Problem Solving website. And long story short, like I started reading like Wikipedia articles about like geometry. And then I stumbled across my first like AMC problem. And when like working on these questions, I guess to like help me better understand like, like the geometry textbook my school gave me, I just like realized that these contest questions weren't textbook problems. They were completely different. Um, every setup was like unique and the solutions were completely unexpected to me. So that's kind of how I got like hooked initially. And then slowly I discovered like what the AMCs fully were, math counts, all that good stuff. And then eventually I met a lot of people like you guys. Yeah. So that's how I you guess became for... a geometry main. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> yeah. What are you saying? Yeah. Yeah, I was just saying, I think my co my competition math experience was kind of similar to both Laura's and Isaac's. So I guess for me, I also like started competition math in fourth grade when I took the AMC8. And I definitely thought the questions are really, really interesting. But I think my competition math career really like took off during the COVID years since there's a lot of time to explore the problems. And I also discovered the forums at AOPS and there was a lot of online competitions at that time, and I was able to form teams with other people in the math community and get to know a lot of people. And those people, we did a lot of math problems together, and they really motivated me to keep doing math, and we had a lot of fun together participating in these math competitions. 
I definitely relate. I feel like a lot of what got me into math initially was just seeing pe the people around me do it, both people my own age and people older than me who I kind of looked up to. So like when I joined like the math counts club in my middle school, I had these coaches there and um, I was really inspired by what they were doing. They were doing these high school contests, like for example, the AMC. And so that inspired me to start the AMC as well. And so you kind of just learn from like seeing people older than you. I, as a homeschool student, unfortunately did not have that luxury. Uh, I had friends, but most of them weren't really into math competitions and there wasn't a math club at my school. So how I got into math, it was uh, my mom, who is amazing. Uh, she did a lot of research for me when I was going into pre-algebra and algebra and all that. And she worked really hard to try to find a math curriculum that would both challenge and interest me because I'd been somewhat bored with the stuff we'd done previously. And she uh, came across the Art of Problem Solving books, which were really cool. They are a lot harder than probably your average math textbook, but the cool part about them is they actually explore a lot of different aspects of the same material that you're learning and encourage you to like, think creatively about it. And to do that, they include lots of math competition problems as uh, just exercises. And there's always a challenge problem section at the end where there's lots of problems. A lot of them are for math contests. So that's where I first heard about math contests. And based on my experience with that, I started a math counts club just with a few of my homeschool friends who also had never done math competitions before. And I believe it was uh, 2020, we did the math counts school and chapter round. Unfortunately, even though we did pretty well in the chapter round, I was very proud of our team. We did not make it to state because COVID. <laughs> yeah, COVID, I think COVID obviously was like a horrible thing, right? But I guess the silver lining is like at least me, uh, you, Ben, and Emily all got like into math contests at the time. And Emily, I think like, didn't we like do a few contests like online together at that time like um yeah so just like a silver lining yeah. Like, oh, cool. yeah yeah there was during covid there was a lot of like opportunities to do contests that you normally couldn't do online so i would say it definitely kicks kicks like kicked off my interest in math as well even though i'd started a little bit earlier because i just had so many more opportunities to meet people and so many more opportunities to like compete yeah, and I also think a good thing about it is that lots of the re uh, the math resources also like were put online. A lot of people started putting handouts online and other stuff. So now there's a lot of resources um, that can be easily accessed on the internet. Okay, so our second question is, what is your favorite part of math? Why do you enjoy it? Uh, so Srinivas, would you like to start off with this one? Yeah, so one thing I really like about math um, the, I think it's just really cool to think about is that math allows you to think about these really abstract things in kind of like whatever way you want. So an example of this, like you might have a problem that's like about like counting certain objects or it's about like numbers dividing other numbers, but there's no set way that you have to think about. There's not like a process that you have to follow. You can instead just think about the numbers or the, the structures in your head however you want. You can kind of build up like your own way of thinking about them. And that's something I really enjoy is that you can kind of visualize problems in your own unique way and that can reveal certain properties that help you. So I really like how you, unique math is in that sense. Yeah, I think this is especially true in geometry. Like you compare one of my geometry solutions to one of Isaac's, for example, we just have completely <laughs> different ways of for doing sure. This from person to person. You see a solution packet for a geometry problem on some math competition. There's like eight different solutions. And you're like, whoa, that's cool. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways to solve this. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I think like math is like sort of your own canvas in the sense like everyone can like get the same question. And even if it's not like inherently visual, like geometry, right? Like, um, you can like draw like a different type of diagram than someone else to like understand the process that's going on. And like what you get in the end is like, even if you think someone else is like 
more experienced than you or better at math mm-hmm. than you, like your solution just might be like more interesting or more clever. And like, there's always like uh, different things you can learn from everyone. Yeah, I really like that analogy, like of, of a canvas, because like you hear people say like math is an art, but what that really means is that you can kind of express it however you want. Um, and everyone has their own different ways of thinking about things and you can learn from seeing other people's ways of thinking about things. Yeah, I think like math is really collaborative a lot of the time. So like like at my school's math team, we like do our problems and people will like explain it on the whiteboard. But like everybody always has like such different ways of doing things. Like last week, I think there's like this problem about like a dilation that like only one person saw. So he drew like two lines on the whiteboard and everybody was like, oh my God, now I see how to do the problem. Whereas before everybody was like bashing out like so many numbers. Wow. And so I think there's just like so many different ways to approach a problem. And like some ways are more elegant than others. Maybe that's like more the intrinsic beauty of math but then there's also just like more like sort of crazy ways to do problems like really complex techniques like bashing which i personally am not a fan of but i have to do anyways since complex I don't really, techniques. sometimes i can't do a problem in different ways <laughs> so yeah. yeah yeah and like going off of that i definitely agree um that doing math with other people can definitely like show you different representations of a problem and that's kind of why my favorite part of doing math is solving questions with other people because that really allows you to see the different perspectives and different ideas that other people have that you may not have been able to see yourself. And a lot of that is just also so much fun because like usually we just get onto a call and then we kind of share the problem solving experience together. And it's also sometimes really funny when like we all just collectively miss something really easy or the questions just, just has a funny solution. Yeah, this is, like, referred to as, like, group solving, I think, right? Like, Mm -hmm. um, like you have a group trying to solve a question or questions. Um, So, yeah, I agree with you. Like, I personally don't do that much group solving, um, like, on my own time just because of, like, schedules and whatnot. But I wish I had more time to, like, group solve. And honestly, it's kind of telling that there is a name for it, meaning that, like, people do it a lot. Um, It's, like, so it's, like, common enough that we've invented a name for it. Because it's just really nice to have someone to bounce ideas back and forth of. And it, like, this is not even restricted to math. I'd say like in almost anything, it's always nice to like share ideas with other people. Uh, I remember uh, I did this all nighter one time. I was solving some <laughs> problem from the International Mathematical Olympiad. And I was very frustrated that I couldn't get it at like eight o'clock at night. And I decided I'm not going to bed until I solve it. And it was like two two in the morning (laughs) by the time I finally got the insight. And that was not good for my sleep. But let me tell you, it was very personally satisfying to uh, finally crack it. Yeah, math can give you satisfaction in so many ways. Like even, even if you don't get the aha moment, just the process of struggling through can still be valuable because you might you might still make progress on the problem you might make some realizations that make you feel like you 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 learn more about whatever the problem is is about i think math is pretty cool because since like shinova said you can sort of like discover things like on your own like you don't really like need a teacher like telling you like oh you have to like do this do this like a lot of time when you're like doing a problem you'll just like naturally like sort of come up with like theorems on your own that people have already found before and it's like a really cool process, like being able to like sort of like mm-hmm. put yourselves in like the shoes of an actual mathematician and sort of just like be like, oh, that's really cool. And like I've seen this in like other problems, too. So sort of just being able to like find all these hidden connections like in between different problems. I like struggling like to a certain degree as well, like I guess in the context of math problems where uh, there's like a sense of like when you first see it, there's like a sense of doubt, like, can I solve this? Mm-hmm. Like. Mm -hmm. am i good enough and i guess like once you like build up the courage to like genuinely try it and whether or not you solve it fully on your own you have to get a hint and then solve it or you learn from it like struggle it and then like you give up in quotes like at the end and like learn from the solution uh that's just all like really fun and uh just to clarify we are not encouraging viewers to pull all-nighters to solve (laughs) um i may or may not have done that by accident once or twice but uh so struggling for a long time can be good but not advertising uh growing kids to pull on that 
Yeah, definitely. And like basically struggling and like looking for insights, these are all kind of just like forms of problem solving. And like you don't have to do math to do um problem solving type thinking. It like comes in many different forms too. It, it can be a geometry question. It could be a question from the International Math Olympiad, but it could also just be a puzzle. You can kind of get also like the same type of feeling by doing those types of problems too. So if like math questions seem kind of like scary right now, like those are also ways to start building problem solving skills. Yeah, they're all interconnected. And I think like, I mean, obviously we're all slightly biased because we <laughs> all clearly like math, right? But I'd say math is like, in my opinion, the best and like objectively one of the best ways to build like mm -hmm. critical thinking, problem solving skills, in addition to like other things like perhaps chess puzzles. Like, thanks everyone for watching our first episode for season three, The Curious Cube. We look forward to seeing you next time.